evaluating the effectiveness of video-based education of venous gas embolism to improve knowledge and competence among nurse anesthesia trainees by Danielle Balzano and Brianna McNamara. Following this instructional video, the nurse anesthesia trainee will be able to identify prevention strategies of venous gas embolism, or VGE, formulate differential diagnoses to recognize VGE, identify key signs and symptoms of VGE to improve decision-making processes, and prioritize the correct sequence of steps for management of VGE. This video focuses on identifying prevention strategies, recognition, decision-making, and prioritization during a VGE. A VGE is defined as the entrainment of a gas, most commonly air or CO2, into venous circulation that ultimately travels to the right side of the heart or pulmonary vessels. There are several signs and symptoms that help to identify when a VGE is occurring. The most sensitive test to diagnose a VGE is a TEE. Other signs and symptoms include presence of a mill wheel murmur, hypotension, decreased end tidal CO2, increased end tidal nitrogen, an increase in CVP, hypoxia, and the ultimate sequelae is cardiovascular collapse. It is important for the nurse anesthetist to recognize the clinical situations that can predispose a patient to developing a VGE. Surgical procedures requiring positioning in which the operative site is above the level of the heart, such as a sitting craniotomy and shoulder arthroscopy. Surgical procedures that require insufflation, such as laparoscopic surgery. Invasive procedures that expose an open vein to the atmosphere, such as CVP placement or disconnection. And invasive procedures that require the patient to be connected to a high pressurized gas source. It is important for anesthesia providers to identify clinical scenarios that predispose patients at risk for a VGE so that the appropriate preventative measures can be taken. If possible, avoid positioning patient in which the operative site or central line cannulation is above the level of the heart. When placing or removing a central line, place the patient in the Trendelenburg position. Remove all air from IV fluids and lines prior to pressurized infusions. Avoid administration of nitrous oxide to patients at risk of VGE. And lastly, consider placement of a central venous catheter prior to surgery start for patients at increased risk for VGE. The following scenario will be used to illustrate the proper recognition, decision-making, and prioritization during a VGE. Mr. Banks is a 60-year-old, 80-kilogram male undergoing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Preoperatively, his blood pressure was 146 over 82, heart rate 64, and oxygen saturation of 99% on room air. His past medical history includes hypertension, non-insulin dependent diabetes, and hypothyroidism. After induction, the patient was intubated and placed on one mac of sevoflurane on one liter of oxygen and one liter of air for maintenance of general anesthesia. Surgical timeout has been completed and the surgeon has placed the varus needle and is ready to begin abdominal insufflation. Now that the varus needle is in place, please begin insufflating and set to a pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury. During the recognition process, the nurse anesthetist monitors the patient's response to insufflation and identifies that there has been a drop in blood pressure, increase in heart rate, decrease in oxygen saturation, and significant decrease in end tidal CO2. She recognizes that the patient may be experiencing a VGE due to the use of a high pressurized gas source. The prioritization of the nurse anesthetist's actions for a VGE is as follows. First, notify the surgeon immediately of a possible VGE and turn off all pressurized gas sources while the anesthetist calls for help. Second, the patient is placed on 100% FiO2 and nitrous would be turned off if being utilized. Third, in the event of a VGE, the surgeon will flood the surgical field with saline or pack the wound with saline-soaked sponges. Fourth, the patient should be positioned in a steep, head-down, left lateral decubitus position. 
Fifth, IV fluids are wide open and IV inotropic support is provided to support blood pressure and the patient's hemodynamics. Sixth, once help arrives, designate an anesthesia provider to place a central venous catheter and attempt to aspirate any gas. Lastly, if the above efforts have not been successful and hemodynamic compromise is severe, the next steps are to perform CPR and follow the cardiac arrest algorithm. Using the decision-making and prioritization skills just described, the patient's VGE can be managed in real time as follows. Now that the varus needle is in place, please begin insufflating and set to a pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury. The patient is experiencing a change in vital signs. Stop insufflation and turn off all pressurized gas sources. I think we have a venous gas embolism. Please call Dr. Johnson's stat to OR5. I'm going to turn the FiO2 to 100% and confirm that nitrous is off. We have stopped insufflating and will flood the surgical field with saline to eliminate any origin of gas entry. I'm going to position the patient in steep Trendelenburg. Let's also turn the patient into a left lateral decubitus position. I'm going to run the fluids wide open and begin inotropic IV support. While I support the patient's hemodynamics, Dr. Johnson, can you please place a central venous catheter and attempt to aspirate any gas that has traveled to the right side of the heart? I have no pulse. Begin CPR and follow cardiac arrest algorithm. Let's review how the non-technical skills of prevention, recognition, decision-making, and prioritization can be used to manage the scenario of a VGE. Prevention. Consider a CVC for patients at increased risk. Avoid positioning patient in which the operative site or central line cannulation is above the level of the heart, and avoid nitrous oxide for patients at increased risk. Recognition. Signs and symptoms include hypotension, decreased oxygen saturations, decreased end tidal CO2, increased end tidal nitrogen. Risk factors include the type of surgery, such as laparoscopic procedures and sitting craniotomies, and the patient's position, such as the beach chair or sitting position. Decision making. Presence of a mill wheel murmur, detection of fireflies on a TEE, monitoring vital signs during insufflation, and being cautious of cardiovascular collapse as the ultimate sequelae. Lastly, let's review the steps of prioritization. First, notify the surgeon immediately of a possible VGE and turn off all pressurized gas sources. Second, call for help. Third, turn on 100% FiO2 and make sure nitrous is off. Fourth, ask the surgeon to flood the surgical field with saline or pack the wound with saline-soaked sponges. Fifth, position the patient in a steep, head-down, left lateral decubitus position. Sixth, make sure fluids are wide open and provide intravenous inotropic agent support. Seventh, attempt to aspirate gas from a central venous catheter. And lastly, if hemodynamic compromise is severe, perform CPR and follow the cardiac arrest algorithm.